Although art is oftentimes a visual medium, it is capable of communicating as effectively as words. Ladies and gents, hello and welcome to Shillong Buzz. I'm Aaron Lingdor. On this edition of the program, we will talk of all things creative and artistic with the genius who is redefining the notion of what art is. He's a visual communicator, he's an illustrator, an artist and an architect. With numerous awards and recognitions under his belt, he is changing the rules of the game. While I'm here at his residence to say a hi to him, let's not waste time and get inside him. A very talented Mario Pathau. Welcome, Aaron. What's the best part of being a designer right here in your hometown? I think uh, being a designer here in my own hometown, we get a lot of projects uh, because uh, there are very less number of designers, especially in this field. And what is amazing about it is that we get to connect with our roots as well because I do a lot of indigenous designs, graphic indi indigenous designs. And we have been involved with illustrating books for children, having that indigenous element and designing certain logos for the government, the state emblem, and farmers' commission, and yeah, so on. Well, speaking of artwork, let's go to that favorite spot where you hang all your best artworks or collaborations that you've done so far. Okay, sure, let's go. Well, uh, this is one of my favorites, actually my favorite. It's uh, an artwork that is very personal to me because it's an amalgamation of religion as well as tradition. Right. So you could see that Mother Mary is wearing the Kasi traditional dress and my name is Mario and she's my patron saint. So, and I'm also very, uh, you know, I'm very rooted to my culture and, you know, with all my styles, my artworks and everything. So I've always considered, you know, why can't religion and culture mix them together. Come together. Yeah, come together and amalgamate and and art is always a form of expression, so this is my personal take on actually of how I feel and what's, uh, you know, all the things that's happening in my life from religion to divinity to culture. Mm -hmm. yeah. Talk to us a little bit about the medium that's being used out here. So initially uh, I started with uh, ink ink, with black sumi ink, and then after that I scanned them and reproduce it by Photoshop and digital coloring. So uh, when you see all of the, all of these details, right. these were done separately on different papers and textures and different um, paint, you know, all of these textures also they were done separately and then later on, on a digital platform, I actually amalgamated all of them. You know, when you talk about this, it just reminds me of the entire art appreciation that we used to do in school. So, <laughs> is, it's that how you would interpret your work in, in terms of art appreciation? I, I think, yes. Um, <laughs> because I think um, art needs to be appreciated. I mean, I'm not saying to glorify myself, but right. I mean, anyone who is involved in the field of creativity understands mm. that a form of self-expression is very vital, you know, all of the appreciation and everything because those are like certain boosters True. Right, to our career. Yeah. I love everything about what you just said about this one but you've spoken to me earlier about other works as well why don't you show me those as yeah, well? Yeah sure. Yeah. Well um, these are a few of the artworks that I love. These are a series of Kasi folk tales. When you s this is one of my favorites. It's called Uklo but Kasi. Right. Peacock and the Sun. Mm -hmm. And you see the Ukwai Utimpo Kashun Uduma and there's Kauramha. So there's something uh, very interesting about Kasi folk tales is that they don't have a happy ending. When you look carefully, they always have this horror, That's this interesting. gruesome uh, you know, ending and they're not always rewarding. When you think about Uklo Barkasini, mm -hmm. it's a story of infidelity. Right. And then you see uh, Ukwai Utimpo is about self-harm and then ultimately taking one's own life. And then you see Kauramha, the giant who, you know, turned into stone mm -hmm. to actually uh, sabotage the people, etc. So, so they, the medium used in all of this would be the same medium, I would imagine? Yes, uh, started with inking and so this is, it's, it's a kind of an exploration and 
a sense of trying to understand how I can amalgamate both digital and you know uh, traditional art together. All of the line works, all of the color schemes, and right. everything, they were pre-thought and you know on rough art or you know manual paper. But then later on, when we produce it on the digital platform on iPad and Procreate, and that's when the magic happens. Mario, that brings me to my next question, which is the obvious question. Does art and creativity run in the family? What's the story? Yes, it does. Um, my dad, late Dr. Pascal Manya, mm -hmm. who is a politician and a writer. So come, let's check out his library, let's the go. family library, and I can check all of his creative works also. So Mario, this is the library you're talking about? Yes, this is the library that we dedicated to our father. Late Dr. Pascal Mania. And yes, creativity does run the family because he, other than being a politician and a uh, you know, professor, he was also a writer, a musician. And uh, these are some of his works that he has done. And uh, I was fortunate enough to have actually, uh, you know, recently okay. illustrated the cover for his books that are uh, part of the syllabus for MBOS Class 11. Right. And yeah, and those are most of his works. These are all of his works? Yes. So it does run in the family? Yes, it does. Now Mario, the question that I have for you right now is the fact that you know, you're very fortunate enough mm -hmm. to have learned and being trained by some of the best teachers and faculties and I would say that those teachers and faculties are mostly from outside the state of Meghalaya, mm -hmm. right? But for some of the aspiring students, let's say here within the state, they might not have that same kind of access to mm. that education and that exposure for whatsoever reasons, be mm. it financial stress, mm -hmm. be it the lack of any other opportunity, logistics, etc., etc. Do you envision a immediate solution anytime soon? I, I think um, one has to search for all of these uh, courses because for my course, right, uh, design, it's very, you know, alien, you know, alien to many people. They don't understand that design is actually a subject. Okay. And des design is such a big term. And, um, you know, whenever I say to people that I am a designer, they think fashion designer. Very true. You know, so they've always associated design with fashion design. Mm. But uh, when you look at, um, you know, the internet is such a huge platform, right, and you if you know certain people, if you know uh, the right websites, they on on YouTube also they give a lot of these tutorials and these guides where what entrance exam you know like fits well for what uh, in your career path, and for design is the same. You know, we have a seat exam called an entrance exam for design, and along with that, if you're doing your post graduation in design and you get accepted you get a lot of financial assistance also. All right. You get paid. Like a kind of scholarship. Yeah, scholarship. Thing, yeah. Everything for, I think, 12,500 per month for master's students. And for um, recently, they have, uh, you know, uh, hiked the stipend for PhD scholars for design. It's okay. 37,000, and it carries on to 41, 42,000. Mm. And if you have PMR, PMRF scheme, it goes to 80,000 per month for That's students. A money, yes. That's a lot of money. Yeah. And um, so I think one also because what happens that uh, on social media, I get a lot of all of these uh, questions, how to get there from, from students outside of Meghalaya. Uh, because they're quite aware of what goes on in this design field. So they'll be like, hi Mario, um, I'm aspiring to be a designer. Mm. I see that you graduated from IDC School of Design. Mm. You know, what did you do to get there? You know, what are the entrance exams? What do I have to prepare? How, how do I get there? What are, the, you know, like, what are the things that I have to keep in mind? Right. What are the questions that they ask during the exam, during the interview? How do I pre prepare my portfolio? So I think in order, like the immediate um, you know, solution is, uh, I think there need to be a lot of um, expert docs and a lot of these career, uh, you know, docs from professionals. Career counselling. Yeah, I mean, in school, not only counselling, is mm. that maybe uh, schools can invite a few, you know, experts who have been in this uh, field for a very long time and then uh, get to talk to students who are like in class 8, class 9, class 10, have a nice seminar and saying that, um, in order to achieve here, mm. you know, like we did all of these things. It's, you know, Rome wasn't built in a day. There's a lot of things that we have to go through. And 
being inspired from a very young age. Mm. You're at the age, you know, at the age of 13 or something. You, you get en enough time to prepare for yourself. So I think a lot of awareness program regarding career paths and everything. I agree to that. You've spoken to us a little bit about that's your masters. I want you to dwell a little bit on your graduation because that's the time where you you know you move from home. <sighs> quite early and then yeah. you jump into a new city, I'm sure there must be a thing called cultural shock. How did you deal with all of that uh, initially? Initially, uh, cultural shock was there. When I was in Punjab, even the geographical condition changed, okay, and uh, it's towards the west. And, yes. You know, um, the sun sets quite early over here. <laughs> and I was there and then um, I thought it was 6 o'clock or something when, you know, the sun was still up and mm. everything, but it was already 7.30 in the summers and I, was, and I was called back to the hostel you know, think. Uh, and uh, there was a lot of language barrier mm. because um, North India was predominantly Hindi you know and um, but then somehow or the other uh, there was a time that you know I got to do this project with a, uh, you know a classmate of mine and she couldn't speak English right. and I couldn't speak Hindi and somehow or the other we managed to pull it off, this one class project. And but then in LPU also we had this one India celebration. And you spent what, like three years there? Yeah, no, we I spent around four years, four years because architecture is five years. All right. And one year was training in mm. Bangalore. Mm. And then yeah, over there we had uh, this one India celebration in which you have to represent the you know the ethnic origin of right. your place and everything mm. from artworks. And I got inspired from there also. You know like making a lot of artworks that talks about my culture mm. and everything. It, it's quite a uh, intercultural knowledge sharing session also where other people will get to know more about my culture and I get to know about their culture as well. So it was a positive <laughs> impact. What's interesting about you, Mario, is the fact that you don't entirely depend on you know, a full-time job. What you do is on the weekends and when you have free time to yourself is work on self-initiated projects. How has all of that helped you grow professionally? And more importantly, would you suggest other people you know, jump into your footsteps? Yes, I, I think uh, being involved in your own self-initiated projects is very... Uh, it's kind of a vital part of your life because you get to escape from this you know hustle and bustle of life and for me in order to escape that hustle and bustle I have my own space you know that I get so involved into my work you know and my own world right. you know and uh, I can take you to that space let's go so here we are this is my personal space right it's actually my bedroom but um, this is actually where all the things happen, all the creativity and stuff. Why do you call this your <laughs> sanctuary? sanctuary. Um, because it's, it's a place that I feel that all of my magic and all my thought process, they're all conceived over here. And uh, I like to be you know, in my own space and work a little bit and uh, get all of these, you know, all of uh, the ideas, ideation process and making all of these you know, the, the, the words that I'm doing, it all happens here. So uh, I do all of my projects over here and ideation process and everything happens here. Thank you. Uh, I work mostly on my, you know, iPad. I mean, I, I tend to sketch first on my iPad or sometimes sketch on my, you know, on the paper and then print them and then color them on, you know, like uh, using watercolor or I just, directly color on my Procreate and most of my works are actually I'm working on this new project like collaborative project with Saramandala right. Foundation and it's all about folk tales and it's about folklore and that talks about um, you know the Gong Thong village mm. and then So when, when you when you get things to your iPad and everything this would be your Final stage or how, how does no, it work? No, um, it's not really. It's like the, the this process that mm. you know uh, will be the initial. You know all of these. Um, so when you look at this also, this was just the, right. the ideation phase. Mm. You know, mm. Just rough idea of mm. how it's going to look, right. and just the you know the color scheme, and then once everything is finalized and everything, we start to with the line work, start to refine them, start to have all of these the real colors, the real hues and everything and saturation and everything and that's 
when we send back to mm. the you know the reviewer and then they say okay you have the green light and that's when we you know work on the finalization and everything well, that makes sense to me. So, what are other things that you do when you're not surrounded by, by all, of this. all of this and novel um, ideas? What are other things that you enjoy doing? I, I like reading and I love reading uh, mangas and I love reading um, you know, comics and graphic novels and, and I used to participate in singing and everything also with you know, the choir and um, school programs and right. everything. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> you know, Mario, it's really interesting to sit here with you. It's yeah. such an honor. What I like the most about you is the fact that it took you 10 to 12 years to be where you are right now. Mm -hmm. And there have been times where you've been uh, down, demotivated. Yeah. And there are times that you feel that you're scared of failing, right? And let's not forget the negative comments yeah. that, you know, people are entitled to. All right. How did you deal with all of that stress and still push yourself forward? I think um, initially um, everything that I do, um, so uh, I kept on, you know, like I posted on social media, you know, 10 years ago, you know, 15 years ago. And my art was very, you know, uh, very rough and very you know, mm. amateur. And um, so there were certain people who commented and they don't know about art. So what happened is like I started following artists on Facebook and you know friend you know like friended them and everything and Natalie Ricci and, and you know Ron Bassaro and every one of them who's like from Europe and everything. So uh, once I got in touch with them, uh, so instead of posting on you know like publicly, mm. I sent to them you know like there's a messenger, you know, okay. Like okay, all of my artworks and mm. everything, and then sort of they they were very kind enough to actually you know like go through their messages and then they see my artwork and they'll be like, oh, you have potential, you can try this out, you can try this out, learn more about figures, learn about this thing. And then, um, so, it's, it's, social media is such a, you know, when, when, once I put in social media, I have to be uh, aware that everyone will have their own take on it. Right, right? because you threw yourself we in public our, domain. Yes, exactly, right? and we can't blame them. Mm. Everyone mm. has their own views and take on, especially creativity when it comes to all sorts of creativity from music, etc., right. etc. No one has the same taste. And yes, there are negative comments, but sometimes I look at, you know, the weightage, you know, when you scale them, the, the positive remarks are more, you know, and the negative remarks are just a handful. And sometimes us as humans, we tend to focus so much on the negative comments, even if it's just one or two comments. Very true. But uh, the, I learned it, you know, like uh, the, we have to focus on what, you know, uh, makes us happy at right. the end of the day. And this really makes me happy. And if it's, if it's not, you know, if it, if it doesn't resonate with that person, I, I don't have to change myself for them. You know, if it, you don't like it, take it or leave it. You can just unfollow me. <laughs> you know, and so I mean, uh, but then uh, on a, larger perspective on a larger scale I've always had you know like uh, encouraging words from people right positive okay. attitude and I believe that will get you really far in life and I mean one has to really imbibe all of that and push mm. yourself through at the end of the day right that's true Mario digital art versus mm. traditional is one better than the other what's your take no um, see um, the concept of digital art it actually sprung up or stems out because of mass production. A traditional art is always, uh, you know, it's one painting and one owner. You know, all of these. So if I were to make a portrait of you, hmm. no one will buy a portrait of you. Like, right? only you yourself will be buying it. You may never right? People might buy. People might <laughs> but, buy. But, so yes. uh, when it comes to digital, just like this, it's uh, it's more on for illustrating on a mass scale and uh, things that, you know, um, we can actually, re for example, the digital artist, we can actually merge the two together. Right. You know, uh, for example, if I were to work on my, uh, you know, a sketch or anything, a rough idea, I can actually easily, you know, like erase or redo my mistakes on digital. Uh, then if the whole blueprint hmm. or the underdrawing is like ready, then I can actually transfer it to my traditional art. That works. and. Uh, traditional art also, it's more towards you know, a form of self-expression and everything. Yes, you can do with the digital art also, but primarily what they do with digital art is that for ads and mm. for logos, for a lot of 
uh, illustrated books and everything. So it helps the, the artist to boost, you know, to, to go towards the commercial part, to the commercial part mm -hmm. of, the, you know, yeah. of the art endeavors. And right. But when it comes to uh, traditional art, you get commissioned by some person. Whatever art it is, uh, this is your first book, am yes. I correct? But it's a graphic novel. Yes. What is Tinrai all about? Where did the inspiration come from? Why don't you tell us a little bit about Tinrai? Yeah, um, so Tinrai, I started working uh, in about this, you know, this whole book, this whole idea, this whole narrative and concept came and stemmed out from you know the conception part was in IDC School hmm. of Design. I was doing my sec, uh, I think second year right uh, and Prasad, uh, professor Prasad Bokal was actually my mentor he is uh, he is very I, I mean his skill sets and his you know his expertise is in comics and graphic novel and we together we we wanted to do something about the Khasi culture and everything and everyone in that you know and during that project uh, you know the timeline, everyone mm. was focusing on different issues, social issues. Some were working on, you know, about uh, scavengers and some of them were working on mental health issues. Right. Some of them were working on various things. And I, I wanted to work on something that reflects the identity of my uh, culture, my hometown, Mikalaya. And recently you would see that the Living Root Bridge has been, you know, given the type by you know UNESCO, UNESCO etc. Yeah. You know, and I was thinking this is perfect. Uh, you know, like uh, personification or the, you know the, the metaphorical association with Nikolaya. Yeah. So that's when uh, you know the whole idea came up, and then I wanted to actually weave a story around it and to understand the you know the need of pres pres the preservation and you know the need of living in harmony with nature, etc. So. And this you're doing it good. differently. Yes. Do you want to do a reading of? Yeah, sure. For the benefit of our viewers. Okay. Tinrai. Tinrai is a Kasi term, which means roots. This is a story written by me and illustrated by me. <laughs> it talks about the need of living in harmony with nature. The living root bridge of Norbert. Uh, Meghalaya is the prime source of inspiration for this concept and the graphic novel takes a shape in the form of conversation between a grandfather and his granddaughter. The grandfather uses a tale as a tool to mentor her in preserving the living root bridge. This tale also has bits and parcels of the indigenous practices, social structure, folk creatures and beliefs of the Kasi tribe. What a perfect way to end the interview. However, I won't allow you to go so soon until unless you answer my final question, and that is who do you attribute your success and all your achievements mm -hmm. so far? I think, um, okay, first of all is God. I wouldn't be here without him. Before. And uh, I think my, my family, there are a lot of people who has actually helped me through. I mean, it's not like, a, you know, like, it's a long journey to get here. And it's still a long journey to get to where I'm supposed to be. And yes, my family, my dearest mom and dad, they, my, they've never, you know, uh, for once thought of this career as, you know, as something that's not useful. And they've always encouraged me to be in, you know, be in touch with my artistic side. And in Edmonds also, in Edmonds School also, um, many teachers were very, uh, you know, supportive. Especially when I was, you know, like in school, and uh, I sketch a lot of all of these posters. I sketch a lot of all the things from, you know, from literature. Hmm. I, to understand the subject better, what I do is actually to, you know, read and then actually try to sketch a scene. For example, let's say Pride and Prejudice True. or Julius Caesar. Julius Caesar uh, class in. I actually make made a whole comic book about, you know, one uh, full scene. Miss Trevor was actually our teacher and. Hmm. Uh, uh, brother Eric Stephen de Souza also was very, you know, sportive, especially during the, you know, concerts, mm -hmm. the musicals, being involved in the musical as well as, you know, to paint all of those stage sets and everything. And uh, as I went along, uh, I could find a lot of people from the professors from um, IDC School of Design and, you know, uh, from, you know, from IIT Guwahati. Mm -hmm. 
mm. and also the people from here, also my peers and my seniors, uh, Rafael Wajri, Gong Karinji Langste, Pak Benedict Hanyota, and several others who has always been so supportive of me, and uh, the uh, Chief Secretary and Commissioner of Arts and Culture, mm. Sri Frederick Karkumar, has always been, you know, like, since day one when he met me and he saw my works, he was like, you know, always mm -hmm. there for, you know, all of the opportunities that I have in arts and culture and with so many things, I mean, like, I owe my gra gratitude and my thanks to all of them. The very talented Mario Pathau, once again, thank you so much thank for you so your much time. Friend. Thank you so much for inviting my team here. <laughs> thank you. I thoroughly enjoyed the conversation. Thank you thank so much. Thank you so much. Mario Pathau is currently pursuing a PhD in design from IIT Guwahati. His collection of artworks is a must-see. Mario Pathau also believes that one should be obsessed with one's work to be successful. And I couldn't agree more. I'm Aaron Lingdo. You're watching Shillong Buzz. Until next time, stay creative.